Smith Show starts right now. the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the national airwaves of ESPN Radio and ESPN News, 250 plus markets across the United States of America. Check your AM FM listing nearest you, plus ESPN Radio and Sirius XM Channel 80, plus ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, quote, buy and save on home insurance with Progressive's Home Quote Explorer, only at Progressive.com. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Lots of stuff to get into today. If I sound a little bit different, my apologies, considering the fact that the weather was 93 degrees in New York City about 36 hours ago, and and then it dropped down to damn near 50 degrees yesterday. To, to, to be in 60 this morning, and now it's a little bit above that. The change in weather has me under the weather. So I got a real scratchy, sore throat and all of that stuff that I'm trying to fight through. It's the worst feeling for me because of what I do for a living. So I don't like having a scratchy throat, but nevertheless, I am here. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about. You know, first things first, let's get the news out of the way first. Sam Donald, suffering from mononucleosis a.k.a. the kissing disease, even though we don't know if that had anything to do with the fact that he came down with mononucleosis. Um, He has been ruled out for this week. Um, I think that's like the fourth consecutive game he's going to miss, if I remember correctly. Um, He will not be playing for the New York Jets three uh, three consecutive games. He will not be playing this weekend's game against the Philadelphia Eagles. And obviously, uh, looking at the way Carson Wentz played, has been playing, knowing that if the Eagles didn't lead the league and dropped passes with 12, uh, including two potential game winners where the Eagles could easily be 4-4, four and four, I mean 4-0, oh, instead of 2-2, two and two, the bottom line is, is that the Jets are going to have their work cut out for them. I don't think anybody can deny that. Nevertheless, he's not playing, and so the Jets are in a quandary, and they're going to have to figure out a way to handle their business in that regard. In the case of the New York Giants, I did not expect them to be stupid enough to play Saquon Barkley. Um, And they're not going to be stupid enough to play Saquon Barkley, despite the fact that he's been practicing with the team. He's been running. He's been cutting and what have you. The New York Giants are going to leave him out for Sunday's upcoming match against the Minnesota Vikings. And we'll talk about that matchup as the show progresses without question, along with a bevy of other NFL items on the docket. We'll be getting into that. We'll also be getting into, um, We'll also be getting into uh, some NBA stuff with LeBron James vowing to return uh, to his king status. Uh, That's definitely something that's going to happen. So we'll definitely talk about uh, LeBron James. We'll talk about Kawhi Leonard. We'll talk about James Harden uh, unveiling his uh, one-legged jump shot and dropping 37 in an exhibition game in Honolulu uh, versus the Los Angeles Clippers. We'll get into all of these things. As the show progresses today, 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Look, let me say this about the upcoming game uh, for the New York Yankees. This postseason appearance that they have up against the Minnesota Twins. The Minnesota led the league, uh, the majors rather, in 300, with 307 home runs on the season. The Yankees hit 306. I don't care about any of that right now. What I care about is the fact that since 2009, 
when the Yankees upended the Philadelphia Phillies, who had just won the World Series the year before, and the Yankees captured the World Series championship under Joe Girardi. What I care about is that since that time, San Francisco has won three World Series. The St. Louis Cardinals, they won a World Series. The Boston Red Sox won two World Series. The Kansas City Chiefs, search Kansas City Royals, I'm sorry, they won a World Series. The Chicago Cubs won a World Series. The Houston Astros won a World Series. Since 2009, going on 10 years, two franchises that were parodied, joked upon, and what have you, about being under a curse because they had had World Series droughts spanning a century. In Boston and Chicago, both have won World Series championships. And the Yankees haven't won one. And oh, by the way, Boston did it with two separate managers. John Farrell in 2013 was managing the Red Sox when they won the title. And last year, Alex Cora was managing them when they won the title. So I'd like everybody to keep that in perspective. And then in 2007, two years before the Yankees won their lone championship of this millennium, Terry Francona was managing the Red Sox when they won the title. He helped them to two titles. So I would tell you right now, that's four World Series titles for the Boston Red Sox since 2004. Four. And what did the Yankees have? At some point in time, this is it. Now, I know the Houston Astros are the team to beat. With Verlander and Cole and Grinky, I personally can't see anybody beating them. I know the Yankees don't feel that way, but I do. I'm very, very, very worried about the New York Yankees. No question about it. I'll be the first to fess up. I got that. I understand it. But I got to tell you something. You got to handle the Minnesota Twins. And you got to handle anybody else that stands in your path. And if the Astros take you out, okay, I got to live with that. Because they are the better team than me. They really are. But being who they are, if you're the New York Yankees, you shouldn't be losing to anybody else. You really shouldn't. You should handle your business. Now, some people sit up there and say to me, why do you not believe in the Yankees more? It's very, very simple. I don't believe in their rotation. And I don't believe that great hitting overcomes great pitching in the postseason. I think that the team with the best pitching staff and a relatively decent run-producing squad will win the World Series every time. That is how I view this, these playoffs. I think that the Astros are head and shoulders above the rest. I think that the Yankees are second. You can sit up there and say the Dodgers, but they got some questions about their bullpen, and I don't think that that's a... I think that's an Achilles heel. I really do. But when I look at my Yankees, I have expectations. And damn it, I expect them to meet them. And I'm particularly disgusted with the Yankees for not making any adjustments with their staff before the trading deadline. To let the Astros get Grinky, I think was egregious. And they can sit up there and say, well, we stood pat, won 103 games. I get all of that. Quietly, they could say, we want a Granky. He didn't want us. He had particulars with his trade in the, within his trade clauses that he could exercise. And if there are certain teams he didn't want to go to, there's certain teams he didn't want to go to. All of that's true. But I'm just wondering. I got serious questions. And I think anybody that's a Yankee fan should as well. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Congratulations to DJ LeMahieu. 327 on the season. Clearly the Yankees MVP. Balled out this year. 26 RBI, uh, home runs, 102 RBIs. Led the team in that regard.
And you got Aaron Judge batting 272, 27 home runs, 55 RBS. I get it. I really, really get it. And remember, he missed 60 games this year. So I understand. But when you look at what it's going to take, I don't listen, Tanaka's got a nice ERA when it comes to postseason action. But I'm just looking at the rest of these guys, and I'm like, what you going to do? German's down for the rest of the season, domestic violence. CC Sabathia couldn't make the roster. I just don't know right now. I just don't know. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Something else I want to bring up, transition into football. You know, we've been raving a long, long time now about Patrick Mahomes and how sensational of a talent this kid is. We've also talked about how it's a foregone conclusion that he's the league MVP. He's the reigning league MVP and probably be two-time MVP. My question, is it time to start rethinking that thing? Is it time to start looking at Russell Wilson and wondering where he should be placed in the vote for league MVP honors in the National Football League? Because when I look at Russell Wilson, completing 73% of his passes, 12 touchdowns, not a single interception in the first five games of this year, all I'm saying is when you got that in front of you, that cannot be denied. That can't be messed with. And if that is indeed the case, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something, please. Russell Wilson. You see him high step, out of the pocket, avoiding tacklers, extending plays, etc. Carson had 127 yards rushing on the ground. There's a reason for that. It's a reason for that. Got right away, Russell Wilson. Touchdown, 118 yards, I'm sorry. One of the touchdown passes he threw, I think it was to Moore. He was scrambling out of the pocket. Akeem Tlaib was going towards Russell Wilson because he's a threat to run with the football anytime. That's what happened. Passing on the run, 130 yards, two touchdowns, passer rating of 142.4. Sensational. And when you look at Seattle being 4-1 on the season, damn impressive. And when you look at the fact that the Legion of Boom is no longer there, even more impressive. Russell Wilson's something special, man. And oh, by the way, with Sierra being his lady, his wife, usually when you're happy <clears throat> and you have a happy home, is this not that element of desperation? Some would say, you know what? That's when guys don't perform well. Well, let me give props to Sierra. You know, the performing artist that she is. She hasn't negatively affected Russell Wilson. He looks even better than he did without her. Just the same way Verlander looks great with Kate Upton. I mean, these are not distractions in a negative way. They have had very, very positive impacts on all world caliber players. Somehow, some way, no matter how good they were before they met these dudes, or how good they were before they met these, these beautiful young ladies, they were even better with them. They were even better. Verlander looks fantastic. Kate Upton is, ain't hurting him at all. Russell Wilson looks fantastic. Sierra ain't hurting him at all. Let's give props to the ladies. Who runs the world? Girls. Who runs the world? Girls. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Because you got brothers performing. And that touchdown pass that Russell Wilson scrambled out of the pocket, ran to his left, and found Lockett in the corner, that was something special. It really, really was. Got to give credit where credit is due. Just got to do it. 
No way around it. These are things that we definitely got to pay attention to. I'm just saying. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. I feel you. Hey, hey, hey. It is what it is. Let's stop this nonsense. And now that we've seen what Russell Wilson is doing and we see the way Seattle is looking, now that makes this Sunday's festivities even that much more interesting. If you're the New York Jets, you're going up against a Philadelphia Eagles squad that could easily be 4-0. Carson Wentz, I'm here to tell you, Carson Wentz has been pretty damn impressive. I don't know whether it was pro football focus or something else. But I got news for you. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch him work and for, for have his teammates drop 12 passes. Imagine what's going to happen when Deshaun Jackson comes back. Imagine what's going to happen when Nelson Aguilar stops dropping passes. Or White Sox. Or whomever Carson Wentz likes to throw the football to. You better look out. You the New York Jets, this notion that the Eagles can't drop 30 on the New York Jets, why wouldn't they? If you could go in Green Bay and do what you did in a must-win situation on Thursday night football, why can't you do it against the lowly Jets 10 days later? Why not? I think they could do it. Tell you that right now. Eight 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 say ESPN is eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. The other side of the festivities is the New York Giants. They've got a game this Sunday against the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm looking at the Giants right now with a rookie quarterback in Daniel Jones making his third start on the verge of potentially being 3-0 and against a playoff-ready, somewhat elite defense of the Minnesota Vikings. And I got news for you. I think the Giants can take them. I, th- I don't blame anybody for saying that the Vikings are the favorites to win this game, but I don't blame. Listen, I believe that the Giants can take them. You know why? By default. You got Thielen. Your wide receiver extraordinaire for the Minnesota Vikings. Talking about we got to be able to pass the ball. Had two receptions for six yards. Last week against the Chicago Bears in a 16-6 loss. Open on several occasions. Missed by Kirk Cousins on several occasions. So much so that Kirk Cousins felt the need to go on his podcast or whatever the hell it was and actually apologize to Thielen because he knows he has a job to do and he hasn't been doing it. And then a day or so later, we learn that Stephon Diggs wants out he wants to be traded. And when asked if he had wanted out, when asked if things were not great, he said there's truth to all rumors. That's what he said. There's truth to all rumors. That's what he said. And so because, and, and what, what does that mean? He's not happy. Things are not going well. And as a result, you have what you have. Football power index giving the Minnesota Vikings a 72% chance to win the game. Giants a 28% chance. Everybody and their mother knows the Giants are an inferior team. Their defense is porous. Their offense without Saquon Barkley ain't that great. We know that. But here's the difference. You got an offense in Minnesota led by Kirk Cousins who no one believes in and the wide receivers don't want to play for. So if I'm the Giants... And I can key on Dalvin Cook, who is a stud when healthy and on the field, just an absolute stud. And I can key on Dalvin Cook. And I can turn around and make Kirk Cousins beat me with his arm. And you got players who have no faith in him whatsoever. It's a lot of pressure on Kirk Cousins. I test him and see what it's worth. Find a way to make him throw the football and see what he can do to beat you. 
And if he can't figure out a way to beat the Giants, then you know all you need to know. If you coach Mike Zimmer, you know all you need to know? That is the way I would look at it. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but it ain't that hard for me. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. I don't know any other way to slice it. I don't know any other way to look at it. I am just of the hardcore belief that I've never seen a situation where you had a quarterback basically have two wide receivers call him out in the same week with one wide receiver being unapologetic about news reports that have circulated he wants out. They didn't have no problem with Minnesota when Case Keenan was at quarterback and they were going to an NFC championship game two years ago. They certainly don't have any problem with ownership, the facilities that they've been provided. They don't have a problem with any of that. So what's the problem? You certainly can't have a problem with playing in the cold weather in Minnesota because you're playing in a dome now. So you're not subjected to those frigid temperatures that was once synonymous with the purple people eaters that was the Minnesota Vikings decades ago. You're playing in a dome now. So what? is the problem. Low throws, high throws, overthrows, underthrows, all by Kirk Cousins, who, by the way, is in the midst of a guaranteed three-year $84 million deal with the Minnesota Vikings, $28 million per year. You combine that with about $48, $49 million he made the two years he was franchised in Minnesota before being let go. Oh, my Lord. Can I have Kirk Cousins' agent? $132 million. So the question is, how long are you going to sit up there and make excuses for Kirk Cousins? Because I don't know if he can anymore. I truly don't. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. We'll get to your phone calls. Got a baseball analyst coming up to talk to us about these us come upcoming MLB festivities, 2019 playoff action to be specific. Plus, I got my man Lewis Riddick coming on at hour number two. So stick around. Don't touch that dial. You're listening live to Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. 